Hello and welcome to the Dynamic CCTV technical video. Today we're going to take a look at the Minmo unit. This is a uh, Hikvision's temperature screening face recognition access control unit. Its proper product code is a DSK1T671TM-3XF. Like I said, this is a face recognition access control unit. It's designed for temperature screening, but also can apply authentication through face recognition, password and also card reading as well through various authentication modes. The primary function of this unit is to screen the temperature of individuals who obviously whose face is captured on the actual screen. It can be used purely as a temperature screening device, so designed to allow strangers permission to enter either through a door or further on into a building as such. These things obviously do have their own lock controls so can work independently, but that doesn't mean that they have to be controlling a lock as such. They can just be basically placed as an alternative to using the screening cameras as such for allowing strangers in once their temperature has been obviously confirmed as being safe as such. One of the, the main sort of selling points of this unit is it is uh, contact free, so the screening process is non-contact. If it was controlling a door, you could potentially have a contact free exit button on the other side as well, so totally non-contact solution as such. So this particular unit, like I said, it can work independently. It does have its own lock controls on the rear, which are uh, implemented using this particular connector lead here so there's various controls on the back alarm inputs alarm outputs the lock controls and also you've got rs45 and wigand as well which can be used to integrate this unit into other third-party access control systems or hikvision's own access controller as well which it can be used with if needed so it's got a, a 120 by 160 thermal sensor on the top it's got dual 2 megapixel optical image sensors 7 inch touch screen card reader at the bottom there on the rear, like I said, the unit has got the, the interface then also a network adapter underneath. It's got a tamper connection. It comes with a, a wall bracket which slots into these two compartments here and locks at the bottom. There is a floor stand, an optional floor stand available for the unit which you can see in the picture here. So ideal for the likes of foyers or large entrances as such. And it also there is an, os an optional desk stand for it as well. So in terms of temperature screen, it's got the, the usual attributes of temperature measuring range of between 30 and 45 degrees. It's accurate to plus or minus 0.5 degrees. Detect the person's face and measure the temperature within one second. Recognition distance but from 0.5 meters to 1.5 meters away from the unit does have a minimum pupil distance setting which is quite handy to prevent it from reading people's faces that were further away maybe just passing past the unit and not actually wanting to gain entrance but it is very versatile in the way that it can be used like i said it can be used to obviously open a door it can be used to open a door for strangers or for known people on the system it can also alert if a mask is not being worn and it can also prevent entry if a mask is not being worn as well as additional settings so we can look at some of these later in in this actual video as we go along I think the next thing we'll do is power this unit up and have a look at some of the settings in the menu and also dem demonstrate it in action. So I've now got the Minmo unit set up, ready to demonstrate. And as you can see on the table, we've got a second generation indoor intercom station. One thing I didn't mention earlier is that these the Minmo units do integrate with the indoor second generation indoor stations. So they do give you an outlet to call somebody. If you were to receive a, a high temperature reading from the Minmo, you've got obviously the option to then call somebody through to an in indoor station, obviously to find out what the next course of action is. Uh, we've got a call button there in the center the screen at the bottom. Simply click, press that, you've got your keypad, put your room number in, press the call button. And as you can see, we've got a ringing indoor station there. So a useful way of integrating the two together, the person being read, and obviously a, a, an outlet to speak to somebody else. There's also a concierge button which allows you to ring through to a master station or back end VMS. Um, calling the center now. As you can see there, it's calling my PC, my um, VMS platform, which I've got the minimum added to. Uh, so just another Cancel the call. means of being able to make contact with somebody, you know, if it was an unmanned station as such, or if it was controlling a door, you can find out what the next steps are. So the left and right, we've got a keypad, and we've also got a QR code option there, two additional ways of authenticating a person, a known person on the system. Out of the box, these things are set to um, to just purely work off temperature screening so they're not really bothered about identifying or authenticating anybody as a person although that is something the unit can do so i'm just going to quickly demonstrate the, the unit in action first of all uh, the normal temperature reading authenticated so that's a normal temperature reading there of a stranger so not no other authentication required i'm now going to demonstrate it's obviously the higher than normal temperature Normal temperature. So you can see there with a 
not the, not the most ideal method, but a way of, sort of simulating high temperature with a bottle of warm water on my forehead. But as long as it can detect the face, and obviously it's measuring, it's looking for the forehead temperature as well. And that's a demonstration of a high temperature reading there as a stranger. So we can log into the unit by holding the screen down for a few seconds. And that'll give us a, a keypad to log in, which I'm gonna quickly do. There we've got our menu. I'm just going to quickly zoom this camera in a bit so we can see that a bit. So we can see that a bit clearer. What's going on? There we go. So we've got various options there. Bottom left hand corner, we've got a temperature option. In here, we can set our temperature alarming thresholds. Enable temperature detection. Obviously, it's an obvious uh, option to have enabled. We've also got temperature measurement only, which is the the option that allows it to work purely off temperature screen. If I turn that off unit is now looking to identify you by other means as a user on the system as such so we can add a user to this device as we go along you've got black body settings at the bottom so if you're using a black body calibrator you can calibrate the unit there we've also got a minimum and maximum up temperature threshold for triggering we've also got a temp temperature compensation setting as well which you can choose to use but obviously make sure that whatever settings you put in there um, are accurate for the ambient temperature of the environment that you're in Door not open when temperatures are abnormal is another setting that you would generally want enabled if it was controlling the door. But these things can be used you know, in an open area just for people passing through. It doesn't necessarily have to be controlling a door. You can just be scanning temperatures. You know, man station that the door security guard then allows you to pass through or, or denies you if you get a high temperature reading. So they're quite flexible in how these things can be used. So I'm just going to save that uh, and we we'll can move back to the main screen. Uh, the user menu at the top allows us to add an actual user to this unit. So I'm just going to myself in here now add a card to it like so you can also add a face to the unit not the most flattering but I'm sure it'll, it'll do uh, we've got authentication mode is actually the, the device but if you wanted to put on bespoke authentication method in for that particular user you can do that as well so we can look at the authentication methods under access control. You can see that there's different ways in which a person can be authenticated. One thing to remember is if you've got temperature measurement on, you do have to present your face to the screen no matter what. So the option to use would be face and, and also it would measure your temperature at the same time. If you want to add additional authentication, you can add the password, you can also add the card. So I've got face or card set at the moment. And you've got your and or option at the bottom there. And you've got under the COM setting there, we've got Wigand and RS45 settings, so this unit can integrate with third-party access control system. It can also integrate with Hikvision Zone access control, uh, 2600 controller as well, as well as working independently. The RS45 settings can be used if you wanted to add an additional uh, keypad or card reader to the unit as well. If it was controlling, let's say, an exit, you can do that through the RS45 option we've got various other options there in relation to the actual unit itself it does have time and attendance built in which you can take advantage of if you were clocking people in and out of an establishment as such you can enable that and set that up and give people obviously various parameters as to when they can, you know, they can and can't or what thresholds they have in terms of clocking in and out under system we've got uh, under the face picture we can set some mask settings to force mask wearing or we can just put an actual prompt on the screen if you weren't wearing a mask but, but still potentially let you in at the bottom there so we've got two options reminder of wearing mask if i just quickly tick that and go back authenticated see it's found me but it's also giving the message that i must wear a mask this is just gonna log back in again That you must wear a mask so i can untick the previous message and turn the must wear a mask setting on there's also pupillary distance there which is quite handy because that can be set to prevent the unit from measuring faces that people that might be just passing passing by the readers and giving false reads as such so you can set that up it's pixels between the minimum pixels between the person's pupils there's also a wdr setting there these are thermographic units so they do have eye accuracy and efficiency uh, and they have obviously a large temperature screening area so that pupil distance is quite handy you know just for protecting against false reads as such so i'm going to quickly take that there and go back to the normal reading screen please wear a face mask 
can see there it's, it's uh, the that I can't go in because I've got a mask on so I'm just going to quickly do that again this time wearing a mask Authenticated. And you can see there that it's, uh, it's let me in. Obviously a couple of times trying to read me there as I've moved in front of the unit. But yeah, you can see there that the mask, obviously another handy feature, may or may not be needed in particular. So we've got down the middle there, we've got obviously a data setting there where we can restore the unit factory default, etc. There is actually a menu option at the back end, IBMS 42, which we'll take a quick look at before we end this video. There's also a transfer of user data, attendance data as well, profile photos, etc. within that transfer menu there. And a useful option at the bottom, it gives you all your device information, gives you your capacity for users and also cards. It also gives you your device information there so you can check out your firmware versions, etc. So that's the actual unit itself through its actual menu structure. There is various connections on the back. The unit does also have alarm output controls which are configured from the menu, the back end menu on, on the 4200 which we'll take a quick look at. But that's handy if you wanted to trigger any third party equipment on a false, on a high temperature reading as such. This will obviously trigger third party horn speakers, sirens, traffic lights, etc. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll take a look, a look at the unit on IVMS 4200 BMS. Okay, I'm now at my IVMS 4200 client, which I'm using uh, the AC version today. It's actually a bespoke version of the software, which is 1.2.50.5. That's a temperature screening version, so you will get better functionality using this version. So make sure you get that, download that before installing. Uh, so there's our unit added on the top there. Already I'm in more unit. We can click on the remote config uh, to view the back end menu. Various options that are available at the front end. We've also got a really output configuration menu here, which you can set your latching duration for. There's a manual operation of the relay output. We've got an image streaming setting, so you can configure your optical image. Stream parameters from here, bit rate, constant or variable, uh, maximum bit rate, resolution up to 1080p, and also your frames per second. Under the Others tab, we've got a supplement light setting, so you can enable the infrared light. If you're using the reader in a sort of shadowy or fairly dimly lit environment, then that will add, add additional illumination to the face capture help you achieve better performance from the unit. You've also got a brightness display from it there as well. Uh, various other options that we've seen earlier on, such as your device information, user, time settings can all be configured from the back end as well. And uh, you've also got your RS-485 configuration screen there as well. So we get rid of that and go up to the Mosaic tab and into event configuration. We can set up various events there for the, not just the Minmo unit, but also the door and the alarm inputs. We can set a priority assist in easy searching under the event center. They're un uncategorized from default. We can also set the linkage action as well for each one of those events for the VMS linkage from here as well. If we go to the event center, we've got a real time event option here, which basically lists each option as it comes through. Remote login set to high priority, which is something I did earlier, but you can see there where it's, you know, your priority will also be listed here on the this tab. And you can also see the temperature readings is a high one there from earlier on. And we can put a, a little tick in that and click on the tab and it shows there a picture of me holding the warm bottle to my forehead, optical and thermal there from earlier on. And there's also an a, enable abnormal temperature prompt as well, which I can quickly demonstrate now, which is basically a pop-up on the 4200 client. So there we've got a abnormal temperature pop-up box there from that particular reading. You can see the temperature there in red. So a ID and card number for me as a user on the system is present there as well. Under the event search tab, we can search for particular events. We can search based on the priority level that we may have set earlier. So as you can see there, remote logins are showing us high. So I can do a, a high search and there's just my remote logins are only being seen or I can do everything like so and it shows everything and it's also available to export as well onto an excel an excel document locally to your pc as well so we can as you've seen earlier we can add users locally on this unit we can also add them remotely using the, the normal procedure really for um, access control and intercom devices under the persons tab we can create a person like so we can add a card to that person we can choose to scan the card in from a local enrollment unit there we go there so we've got a local enrollment unit there which we can select or we can choose to scan it in from the actual Minmo unit itself which I can do there and if I click on the read tab you can see the card numbers come in there on the screen and that's allowed to add a card there for a person 
and we can call it Graham. We can add a face there or we can remotely collect the face or we can upload the face picture if we wanted to. But again, this procedure is the same for any access control intercom device, so it's not really something we need to spend too much time on during this video. But once your user's added here, you can then, under the access control tab, add that particular person to the unit. So we can, by doing this, we can click on the person, we can click on the Minmo unit that we want that person to be able to operate. If there was multiple Minmos, we would tick them there. And once we've saved that, we'll give it a name forget that demo and uh, there's also a template there which is obviously a, a scheduling for that particular person you can create a template here so, uh, your customized template if need be obviously the all day authorized is in there as a default the setting save that and then we can apply that to the unit and tick it applies it across and that sends it to the back end as a user or users another way of being able to do it one that I'm sure you've seen uh, pr using previous access control in the com products but that's just an introduction there into the, into the Minmo unit and what it can do. I'm sure you can appreciate the vast sort of environments this could be utilised in, not just for actually allowing access through an actual physical door, but just into an area or in another substitute for for the, the screening camera. Different environments make it uh, require different uh, devices to carry out the same procedure, and obviously the flexibility of these units and also the floor and desk stands allow these to be utilised in a lot of different areas and obviously protect the health and safety of all those inside at the same time. So if you've got any further questions on the Minmore unit, technical questions on the Minmore unit, please get in touch with Dynamic CCTV's technical support department. We're ready and wait, here waiting to take your call. Any additional sales related questions, contact your account manager and they'll be more than happy to assist you further. But, uh, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Continue to like and share. I really appreciate the popularity of them so far, so please keep that going and we'll see you next time.